Hi everyone, and welcome to the brand new automations guide for Prism AIO. The whole Prism team is very excited to bring this new feature to all our users, which will allow them to set up automation groups and be able to check out products without having to be at the computer and staring at monitors all day. And let's be real, we could all use some of that. So in this video, we're gonna start off by kind of explaining the general automations tab going into the general settings, automation settings, and then the task data settings. Next, we'll be going over suggested site setups, um, specifically for foot sites and Shopify. Then we'll be moving on to the monitor pop-out, which has a checkout feed and monitor feed. And then finally, we will end the video with an FAQ. All right, so now let's talk about the automations tab. So you'll notice that there's a brand new icon over here. It has a little bell symbol. This is gonna be the Automations tab. So as you can see, once you click on it, you get all of these new settings that you have to input. And it might look a little intimidating, but trust me, it's pretty simple once we go over it. But before we start, we're actually gonna to go to the Settings tab and we're gonna to go to our Site Defaults or Site Options. So on the Site Options right here, um, you just want to make sure that you set your site defaults because essentially for Shopify um, automations, you're going to want to set this up and have it ready. So let's say um, I want to choose one profile that I normally like to run Shopify uh, restocks for. Go ahead and choose that right here. Um, there's a drop-down menu that you can choose all your uh, profiles. And for me, I'm going to use my business Amex. All right, next you have your sizes, um, you can choose whatever. I personally like to always have random because if I have an automation group set up, um, norm normally it's gonna be a profitable item. So I just wanna make sure that um, I'm running for all sizes, no matter what. Here you can also choose size uh, groups. So you can do uh, specific sizes. So you can go ahead and do, let's say I just wanna do base sizes. There you go, you have four through 6.5. But we're gonna leave it at random. Next, um, you have your proxy list. I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, the proxies that I like to normally use. Um, it can be whatever proxies you like. Um, normally, for because we don't have a site selected, I would choose whatever proxy list works on Shopify normally for you. Shipping rate, normally I leave this blank. Mode, I'm gonna choose safe mode just because uh, a lot of times when Shopify stores do restock, they still have some sort of bot protection, um, or you can choose fast, it's up to you. Um, I prefer to use safe. And then the source um, is most likely gonna be uh, default, or you can choose auto solve, because um, some people have the auto solve AI, which will allow them to solve captures also away from the computer. And then um, that's pretty much it, and we're gonna go ahead and save. All right, so we have that saved for our global defaults. And now I'm actually gonna go ahead and set my foot site defaults. So first up is Foot Locker. Go ahead and find Foot Locker. All right, so for Foot Locker, I like to use my foot site cards. Um, I already created a profile group. I'm gonna run for random, because just like Shopify, I'm running for pretty much only profitable items. I'm not choosing any accounts because I don't wanna log into any accounts. I'm gonna use a proxy list that I know uh, is unlocked on foot sites and works on foot sites. Shipping rate, obviously you don't use shipping rates on foot sites. And then gift card list, you can go ahead and use gift cards if you want. Mode, um, you're gonna leave this blank as well because you don't use a specific mode for foot sites. And then for source, I'm gonna use uh, a third party capture solver or um, since right now um, foot sites use G-Test, I'm gonna leave it at default. So go ahead and click save. All right, so now we have our uh, site default set for Foot Locker. We're gonna basically copy this and do it for all the foot sites. So uh, next would be foot action. We're gonna quickly go and set all those the same. Do, do, do. All right, does that look right? Yep, all right, now we have that. We're gonna go into champs. We're gonna set that. Okay, everything looks good. Save. 
go to Kids Foot Locker. Oh. Save, and then uh, I believe last one was East Bay, right? East Bay, all right, let's go. So we have all that set and we should be good. And once I click out of it, as you see, now we're on our global defaults, back to our Shopify settings. Um, let's just make sure that it's saved correctly. We're gonna go to Foot Locker or Foot Action again. You see now settings changed and we have everything set. All right, so now that we have this set, let's go back to our Automations tab. All right, so now let's start talking about the actual Automations tab. So to get to the actual Automations tab, you're gonna click on this new icon, which is a little bell symbol. And once you go there, you can see all these different settings. So let's talk about first the general. Um, so obviously you're gonna click new. Um, right now, obviously I don't have anything set up, so that's why everything is blank. But if you have previous automations created, always make sure to click this button to create a new one. First things first, you're gonna choose a name for your automation. Let's create a foot site restock. Uh, did I spell that right? Yep, foot site restock. Uh, we're gonna name this foot site restock. Then you can enter in your monitor inputs. You can choose to enter in one uh, monitor input, so that's uh, usually how foot site SKUs look like. Or um, I personally have a full list of profitable SKUs that I wanna run for. So as you can see, it's one monitor input per line. Uh, make sure you don't have any extra cases. Make sure if you're copying and pasting from somewhere that um, it's pasting properly where there's one per line. So everything looks good, so we should be all set there. Oh, and we're gonna get rid of that extra line. All right, next you have a toggle button that says use all sites. So when you toggle this on, it's basically gonna monitor everything, um, all the sites that Prism supports. For this, I just really only wanna monitor the foot sites. Um, for example, like I don't need to monitor foot, uh, foot Locker CA because I don't have profiles for Foot Locker CA. So I'm gonna choose each US foot site individually. So champs, um, and I mean, for Foot Locker CA, they usually are different SKUs and different uh, formats, so they don't share it, but I personally just like to separate them. And Foot Action, and oh, what am I missing? Foot Action and Kids Foot Locker, there we go. All right, so we have all the foot sites selected. Next, you have the option to choose task quantity per profile, and I personally like to keep it at one because I'm going to use a profile group where I have a bunch of profiles already in. And for foot sites, you generally don't want to run too many tasks with the same profile or else you might run into the issue of cart empties where basically if one cart or one task is already carting and a second task attempts to cart, it will basically clear out both carts. So just be careful of that. All right, so next we got the automation portion. And as you can see, the first option is monitor checkouts. And this is toggled off. So when this is toggled off, basically the automations tab will be going based off the global monitor, which are the monitor channels in the Prism Discord. And then you have the option to stop after X minutes, which um, for foot sites, um, basically it means that your task will automatically start once it sees one of these SKUs um, on the global monitor. And let's say I wanna stop after 10 minutes. So automatically, once tasks start, the timer goes, it'll run for 10 minutes and then automatically stop. Then if I toggle this on, now what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna monitor from the global monitor still, but then it's also gonna be monitoring all the Prism user checkouts in the Discord channel, which is in the checkouts channel. So um, then you have the option to start after X amount of checkouts. So you can choose any value you'd like here, um, obviously one and higher. Um, sometimes there's false positives on the checkout channel. So I personally like to keep it anywhere from three to five. Um, let's just choose five for now. Next we have stop after X minutes of number of checkouts. So um, if you've been the Prism user for a while and you've been going for foot site restocks, you know that generally, um, after a certain amount of time, checkouts start to slow down, and let's say you just wanna preserve your proxies or just wanna save data, um, you can go ahead and choose any amount of minutes. Personally, I like to do uh, maybe after 10 minutes of checkouts, I like to stop. 
And if I do that, then normally I will increase this value, right? So this is just the total amount. So no matter what, once the task start, um, your task will stop after X amount of minutes. Let's set this to 15. And you know what? Actually, we're gonna decrease this to five. So just be careful, just because, especially with foot sites, um, sometimes we have a ton of checkouts coming at once, so the Discord uh, channel can't keep up. So you might still have checkouts coming through, even though uh, users aren't actually checking out at that time. So just be mindful of that. Okay, and then finally, we have the task data section. So here is where, um, it's basically like the site defaults, but you're gonna have to enter in one more time. So um, for foot sites especially, um, Shopify, um, you'll just have to enter it in, but for foot sites, um, oh, that's a size group. So for default, I'm gonna choose random because I'm gonna run for random because obviously all these SKUs I deem as profitable. Then profile group, I'm gonna choose foot sites again, foot site cards. And then proxy list, we're gonna go ahead and use uh, the proxy list of my choice. All right, so now I have everything filled in. All you have to do now is click create. So as you can see, we chose five sites, watching five sites, and now it's just running. So if any of these SKUs uh, either pop up on the global monitor or we see uh, five checkouts in the checkout channel, it will automatically create a task and start running right away. And as you can see, um, there's no capture source option here, so that's why it's always important to fill out your site defaults in the settings tab. So we basically showed you guys a suggested setup for foot sites. Um, normally, I would probably do uh, stop after X minutes from anywhere from 10 to 15, and this is kind of how I have been setting up, and it's been working really well. So let's go ahead and show you guys a Shopify setup. So we're gonna click new. And then name is maybe, let's say I'm going for the Yeezy 450s uh, that I recently, that recently came out. So Yeezy 450, uh, what was it? The slates or I guess, you know what? We'll just run for all Yeezy 450s. So here for monitor input, we're gonna use a, a Shopify keyword set. So as you see, it's a Yeezy 450 and I'm obviously not trying to go for any kid, infant or toddler sizes. So just be careful, um, especially with Shopify keywords. Um, if you do something like just Yeezy and that's it, you'll basically, anytime any type of Yeezy uh, product title pops up, you'll try to check out. So sometimes some sites, um, especially Shopify stores, will throw bait products out. So you might check out those and it's probably gonna get canceled and they might flag your information. So just be careful. Um, you have a ton of customized, uh, you can customize anything you want here. You can use any keyword sets. You can use multiple keyword sets. Just be careful what you put in. And then for Shopify, uh, generally, I'm gonna use all sites because uh, the keyword set, I wanna monitor all the different Shopify stores or else I would have to go through and basically uh, choose each site. So I'm gonna use all sites here. And then task quantity per profile. Um, Normally I like to keep it at one, especially because Shopify, um, with my proxies, I don't wanna create a ton of tasks because each task is obviously gonna have to solve some sort of captcha. So I usually like to keep it one. And then on automation, um, for Shopify, generally you're just going based off the global monitor. Um, I, you can set monitor checkouts as well, but this is more geared toward foot sites. Um, I personally like to toggle this off and I will stop after uh, usually anywhere from three to five minutes, any restock will sell out. I mean, most of the times if you look at any monitor, usually restocks go like this. So I usually set it at three, um, maybe, you know what? We'll just set it at three to five, I say it's safe. Uh, I'm gonna set mine at three. All right, so now task data. Um, this is where I'm gonna choose sizes. I'm gonna choose random. Then profiles, um, I don't really like to use profile groups. I don't like to create a bunch of tasks. So I'm gonna choose just you know some profiles that I might like to maybe check out with. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose two. So it's gonna basically create two tasks since I only have uh, two profiles selected and one task quantity per profile. And then we're gonna go ahead and use uh, whatever uh, proxy list that you like to use for Shopify. So go ahead and click create. And now we have an automation that is basically gonna be searching for this keyword set 
on all sites that we uh, support on Prism. So, but this is mostly geared towards Shopify, obviously, because this is a Shopify monitor. All right, so in addition to the brand new automations feature, um, we have also introduced a brand new monitor pop-out. So you can always access it by clicking this button in the top right corner. And here you have two different types of feeds. So you have the checkout feed, which will basically consist of all Prism users, uh, or Prism's checkout log, and it's updated in real time. Then you also have the monitor feed. So the monitor feed consists of the unfiltered Shopify monitor, and it is also updated in real time as well. So you also have some quick task settings. So if I were to choose a specific size that showed up, um, it will create a task for just that size. If I click this little icon, the paperclip icon, it's gonna copy the actual product URL into my clipboard. And let's say you just want to quickly go over and quick task and paste the uh, product URL, you can go ahead and do that. So it's really up to you. All right, and now let's talk about the FAQ. So um, we had some questions that popped up while our beta, our beta testers were using this, and let's go over those questions. So first question is, what products can I monitor? So you can monitor uh, PIDs, keywords, and also uh, direct product URL links for Shopify. So um, let's say you just wanna run for a specific product on a specific site, you can go ahead and create an automation with just that whole direct link. Uh, next, how many products can I monitor? So you can monitor as many products as you want. So go ahead, go crazy. Um, you can create specifically, you know, an automation for one site, one item, or you can just do it just like I did for foot sites, just create a bunch. It's all up to you. Next, will my data be used during automations? So um, to answer this question, your data will only be used when the tasks start running. So Let's say I had a residential proxy uh, a proxy list right here. While this is not running, um, it will not use any data. We monitor it on our end. So only when something actually restocks that you have listed here, um, then it'll create the task group and then it'll start running. But obviously it's gonna stop after your settings right here. So it's gonna stop after 10 minutes no matter what. So you have that uh, peace of mind that you won't be burning up your data if you're away from your computer. And we also have a feature where um, whenever an automation starts, you will get a webhook that tells you the automation started, and then it'll also send another webhook um, that tells you when the automation stopped. So if you're ever away and you, know, you see the automation start and you, you at least have that peace of mind as well to check your uh, webhooks to see when it stopped, just to know that, okay, I'm not burning up my data while I'm away. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, hopefully this guide helped a lot of you guys understand how to set up properly for automations. Um, we're super excited for all the users to get their hands on this feature and be able to test it out, and we hope to see a lot of you guys cooking soon. All right, thanks, guys.